All right, what's up guys? Uh, this is uh, another installment. Again, in the short series uh, I'm undertaking uh, on airbrushes. Now this particular uh, segment, as you could tell by um, the title, um, is about cleaning your airbrush. Now this has been spurred on by another YouTube uh, video that I saw actually today. Uh, where the guy says uh, pretty much that the easiest way to clean your airbrush is to throw it into an ultrasonic cleaner and clean it that way. And I'll tell you right now, you shouldn't do that. Uh, it can actually damage your airbrush. I have seen ultrasonics uh, strip the finish off of anodized aluminum on airbrushes as far as uh, some Pache handles or Posh handles, some even harder on Steenbeck, the Infinity handle. I've seen those uh, just come off, that coating come completely off, uh, even though anodizing's, well, anyway, uh, the ultrasonic stripped it. I've seen uh, some airbrushes who they've lost some of their nickel plating. Uh, also, the problem is for you to run uh, your airbrush in an ultrasonic cleaner, you need to take this valve off because you need to take everything off and everything out and then throw this into an ultrasonic cleaner. And in the particular video, uh, I won't mention names of the video, um, they even said that uh, you have to do it a few times. Now that was for paint that was dried and left overnight in your airbrush. Uh, well, very simply don't do that, right? I mean that seems basic enough, but I understand uh, sometimes you just can't help it and something happens you'll have to walk away from the bench and you'll forget or you'll put something down and you'll forget and you won't come back to it and by the time you get back to it they'll have dried paint in it. Well the guy uses some weird special chemical. And for one I don't like that because you have to go buy, buy a special cleaner. Uh, so what we're going to do uh, is do the same thing he did only one uh, we won't use an ultrasonic cleaner and two We'll use regular old lacquer thinner to clean our airbrushes. The other difference we're going to do is he used uh, Guns uh, Mr. Aqueous and Tamiya as his uh, paints that he left and dried. Uh, and I think that's kind of cheating in essence that these are actually very easy to clean. So what we're going to do uh, in the Omni 4000 we're going to leave some Vallejo Model Air and in the Mr. Hobby uh, PS267, which has a .2 needle in it, uh, we will use Tamiya XF69 uh, NATO Black. Sorry, the light's kind of bright, so, but XF69. Uh, now, both of these um, were mixed pretty well before uh, the Tamiya with uh, the Badger paint mixer. Now, I have tape on this because it was uh, starting to loose up on the front, but. If you don't have a to me a, or a Badger paint mixer, uh, get one because they are cheap at ten dollars or whatever it is, and they mix uh, jars that you can get them into uh, better than shaking them and much faster. So, what we're going to do is we're going to thin uh, the Tamiya XF69 with Tamiya's own lacquer thinner, uh, which I have in its own uh, little squeeze bottle, uh, but. Trust me, this is to me a lacquer thinner. I would use Mr. Leveling thinner, and that would make us an even stronger, uh, really bond. But I'm not going to waste it for this test. And for the Model Air, uh, I don't think we'll need to thin it. And if we do, uh, we will use uh, UMP uh, acrylic airbrush thinner or Universal airbrush thinner, which is uh, this stuff. So what we're going to do is we'll fill up uh, or put some in the color cup, kind of stir it around to get a coating on the inside of the color cup, uh, spray it through, uh, remove uh, the paint uh, from the very bottom without wiping, spray out what's in there and then just leave it. So I'm going to do the standard, okay someone's spraying uh, and they run out of paint and then they put their airbrush aside and don't clean it. So that's what we're going to simulate. So uh, let me uh, rearrange some of the stuff and we'll get back and do this. 
uh, I'll see you in a minute for me, uh, right now for you. Alright guys, uh, like I said, it'll be right now for you. Uh, at this point we're going to put some uh, paint in the airbrushes, uh, spray some, and then leave the airbrush till tomorrow. Now, right now, it is 5.52, Thursday, August 31st. 5.52, Thursday, August 31st. Now we're going to leave these at least overnight, at least overnight. And then we're going to come and see how easy they are to clean with lacquer thinner tomorrow. So, uh, Omni 4000 first, and uh, like I said, Vallejo Model Air. Now, the video I'm talking about, he didn't use this. He used Tamiya and uh, Mr. Color, Mr. Aqueous. And I have my uh, hose. So let's uh, plug it in, check my pressures. I need to turn up the air. Hold on. Now 755, seven, or 1755, 555, Thursday, August 31st. Empty. Now you can see uh, that color cup is dirty. Obviously it's not as dirty as the Omni 4000, but it is still quite filthy. Um, in fact, uh, I'd feel real bad if I didn't clean this right now. It's very, very tempting. These are going to stay just like that. Not sitting right here on my bench. I have other work to do. Uh, but they're going to sit that dirty all night. Again, I'll show you one last time. 555, Thursday, August 31st. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, it is the next night. Um, Tell the phone. It is 2100, Friday, September 1st, or 9 o'clock. These have been sitting for over 24 hours. Uh, as you can tell, they're both still dirty. Haven't touched them. Uh, we, exactly what you just saw is exactly the way they sat for a day. I mean, and the paint is cured. I mean, it is set. It is dry. Now, uh, the only things I'm going to use to clean these it's a paintbrush, little glass jar, so happens to be an old to me a paint bottle. Uh, dentist uh, paper points, interdental brushes. Uh, these happen to be just the Walmart, cheap Walmart brand. You can get a bag of these for cheap. Uh, you probably won't need them, but if we do, more brushes. We'll need the uh, Iwata. Uh, nozzle wrench for the Mr. Hobby airbrush. Uh, also have a reamer for the Mr. Hobby airbrush. If we need it, though, uh, we should not. Uh, of course, uh, pipe cleaners and. That is about it. Um, actually, it's going to need uh, another interdental, br interdental brush. Uh, we're going to take it out of the handle and put it into this, and that will allow us to get uh, back into this portion of the airbrush, uh, which is something you can't uh, really do that well from uh, inside uh, the color cup. 
And so I'll do that off camera before we get started. Uh, and uh, a loop uh, to check for uh, any damage to the nozzle and or needles. Uh, but we probably won't use that. And of course, um, Q-tips and a cleaning brush. Now this is the brush I always use to clean my airbrushes. Uh, every single airbrush after each time I'm done using it, which obviously I didn't do for these. And as far as a cleaner goes, uh, you have Ultimate Mulling Products there, uh, Ultimate Airbrush Cleaner, which is uh, very good stuff. Uh, or you can make your own homebrew thinner. Uh, I got some of that. You have a, a lot of ammonia based thinners. I don't recommend using straight Windex, but if you need to, you can. And what we'll be using is this regular, normal hardware store lacquer thinner. Not uh, Mr. Color Leveling Thinner, not to me a lacquer thinner, but regular full strength lacquer thinner. This is what I always use to clean my airbrushes, especially if I'm using lacquers. Uh, and even most acrylics I'll do this. Now some uh, paints, you if you just hit them with a straight uh, lacquer thinner right away, they kind of get uh, gummy and can fight you a little. But usually there's nothing better, better uh, than just regular lacquer thinner. Now, um, we're not going to take these completely apart. Again, the whole argument is that an air ultrasonic cleaner is an easier way to clean your airbrush. Uh, and we're going to show that that's just not the case. Um, now, both of these, again, I've been sitting out. This had the Tamiya. Uh, this has the model, the Leo Model Air. Now, both of these are only going to have their uh, front ends removed, nozzles removed. I mean, look, I mean, the needle is still free on this. I mean, it's been sitting all night, and the needle's still free. Of course, it's it was to me a paint thinned pretty heavy. Now, normally I would take the needle out uh, before removing the nozzle, uh, but for the case of this, since I know it is so dirty. I don't want to pull the dried paint back on the needle through uh, the rear seal uh, and risk uh, getting any little nicks or tears. Now before we move any further, i got to be careful about uh, the needle sticking out. If you are getting paint back here in your airbrush, inside of the rear tube, the body of the airbrush, two things. Either you're spilling paint and it's dripping down this way, or your seal's bad. Otherwise, you should not have any paint back here. Also, uh, well, just you shouldn't have any paint back there. If you if you are, check to see if you spilled it, and if you didn't spill it, uh, that seal may be bad. So I'm going to retract uh, the needle with the trigger, and then I'm going to remove the nozzle. I start with a wrench and then with my hand I'll put that in the glass jar. We'll loosen the needle chuck and we'll push the needle out the front. And you can see uh, how dirty that needle is. And it's not wiping off with my fingers because it's stuck. It's been there all night. So that's as far as we're going to disassemble a Mr. Hobby airbrush. You don't need to take it apart any more than that. Now, if you were going to do an ultrasonic cleaner, you would. You'd have to take the valve off. You'd have to take uh, the entire internals out uh, and really even the seal. Because uh, the issue with ultrasonics is they make everything vibrate. And it's actually very violent and vibrating. And if you have two pieces together and they start vibrating, it can do a lot of uh, wear on them, especially for small threads like your nozzle. Um, they also don't do very good for seals, even solvent proof seals. You put them in an ultrasonic cleaner for too long uh, and they'll swell and it can cause some other problems. So that's as far as the Mr. Hobby is going to be taken apart. And now we'll take apart the Omni 4000. You can tell a lot more paint in that one. Acrylic sticks a lot more than a, a thinner lacquer does in an airbrush. But same thing as the Mr. Hobby. And as you can tell, I mean, the needle is still I mean, it's been sitting all night full of paint, and the needle's still free. Now, sometimes it won't be, in fact, the majority of the time, uh, you can bet it'll be stuck, but I don't know if you can see that. I mean, there is a big glob of paint on the front of that needle. 
Uh, so I'll pull back the needle, and I may need the uh, wrench for this. Uh, and so hold on, uh, let me get the uh, wrench to take the front of the Omni 4000 off. All right, now we have the wrench. Again, be careful with the nozzle. I'm going to pull the trigger back so the nozzle's not sticking out. Uh, and then loosen it. It, was, or it wasn't really tight. Um, so, again, I'm going to take the needle out the front so I don't uh, drag any dried paint on the needle back through that seal. So, again, in front of it, here comes the nozzle. And I don't know if you can tell, but I mean, this is just gummed up with dried paint. I mean, that's that's on there. I mean, so, um, again, we'll clean that in a, in a moment. Uh, and again, you have to be careful with uh, badger airbrushes, uh, as far as I know, all of them. Uh, but when if the needle's out, the trigger's not held in. So, uh, be careful of that. And this is a uh, uh, high roller trigger. So there they are. They are both disassembled as far as we're going to take them for this. Again, if you're going to use an ultrasonic cleaner, you need to take them apart completely. Well, there goes a lot of the uh, ease and the quickness of using an ultrasonic cleaner. So uh, let me get up, let me get set up better to clean them, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're going to clean the Mr. Hobby uh, PS267. I, may, I might have said P, uh, 2670 yesterday or earlier in the video. Remember, this one is the one that had, uh, to me, a NATO black XF69, thin 5050 with, to me, a lacquer thinner in it. And then again, it sit for over 24 hours. You can tell, I can do it without dropping it, paint on the needle. Of course, there's going to be paint in the nozzle, and of course, there's paint in the color cup. Now, uh, the needle, the nozzle wasn't here, but I took it out. Um, this has been filled with, again, normal hardware store lacquer thinner. And now, let's clean it. All right, now that I have the air hose, uh, my compressor is filled up. Uh, let's see how clean this is. Now to do that, uh, I'm going to black back flush it. And we'll see how much, how dirty or cloudy uh, the thinner gets. So, pop some lacquer thinner in. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, I have to use this to uh, back flush it because of the crown cap. So. Air's on, no bubbles coming up, so we know that the nozzle's not blocked. And not a bit of paint came up. This airbrush is spotless. And it took just a few minutes. It took probably less time to clean this airbrush, and we'll make sure this. No paint coming out with that thinner. It probably took less time to clean this airbrush the way we did than it probably would have uh, to strip everything off, throw it in an ultrasonic cleaner, and pull it back out, dry it off, and put it back together. Now that's not including the time it soaks in the ultrasonic cleaner, just the disassembly and reassembly of the airbrush. Uh, we probably cleaned it in less time than that would have taken. And it is, as you can tell, it is spotless. It's clean. Uh, it took very little time. Again, that was to me a paint and that cleans very easy and very quickly with uh, lacquer thinner, so I'm not uh, surprised, but there you go. If you're using Tamiya Paint or uh, Guns, Mr. Color, or Mr. Paint, use 
lacquer thinner and you won't have a problem. Again, this sat for over 24 hours. It sat dirty for over 24 hours. And it was that easy to clean. So, any ease or quickness just went out the window with an ultrasonic. Because uh, if we were using an ultrasonic cleaner, this would still be sitting in the cleaner. Uh, I'll show you, it is uh, 9.30. Now that includes, of course, uh, pauses, turning on compressors, getting things out, fixing things. Um, in terms of compressor and uh, some of the supplies. But you saw the entire process I did cleaning uh, is on video and you can time it. You can go back, check the time bar, everything. I mean, it didn't take long. So there you have it. The Mr. Hobby PS267 is clean. All right, now it's time to clean the Badger Omni 4000. Uh, it is 931, Friday, September 1st. Uh, ignore the temperature on that. I don't have it set to update. Um, though right now it probably is 82 outside. Um, that's what happens when you live in the desert. Uh, now this does have the Vallejo Model Air in it. And this is uh, harder to clean than Tamiya with lacquer thinner. I'll guarantee that. Look how dirty that is. And look just what came out. Look at what just came out of the front of that nozzle. Look at that. Nasty, nasty paint. And I'm getting more. Look at that. It's like you're watching Dr. Pimple Popper. And we started cleaning this airbrush at 9.31. It is 9.48. And that's with the, a stop or two. Or actually, I don't remember what time it was we started. But there we go. Airbrush is clean. Reassemble. Nozzle. Air cap. Oh, actually. O-ring. Nozzle. Air cap. You don't need to tighten that down super far. In fact, uh, I don't use the wrench to tighten them. Um, I don't know why I had to use it last time, but uh, there we go. Tightened on there. Uh, we'll put the uh, crown cap. I'm just used to calling them crown caps. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, put it on there. Take the uh, first of all. Remember, put the trigger back in, and then uh, like before. A little bit of the badger needle juice. Reinstall the needle. Make sure it's seated, but don't push too hard. And there we have it again. Hook up the air, and we'll check how good we did. Uh, with some lacquer, uh, lacquer cleaner, lacquer thinner. So again, cover it with our fingers, turn on the air. And we didn't see the needle far enough, but actually, I had the trigger back when I seated it. Not a single bit of red in that thinner. This airbrush is clean. Dump that, and we'll. Make sure the trigger's all the way forward. Seat the needle again. Tighten it. Uh, we'll do that test one more time, and if they still get bubbles, I'll have to double check. But if yeah, there we go. And 
a few, but not a lot. Not like it was before. And again, back flush, back flow, whatever you want to call it. No color in there. And there's no other paint in this. Again, dump it, and now we'll paint or blow it through. Nothing. Like normal, I'll take some lacquer thinner and blow it through. I'm blowing in a direction where there's nothing. That's why I'm facing a funky direction. Back flush it one more time just to check. Okay. The airbrush is clean. It's bubbling. Um, I don't know why maybe I didn't seat it the needle again far enough, so... Make sure it's seated. There we go. No bubbles. Bubbles, no bubbles. Bubbles, no bubbles. There we go. Again, dump it. Spray it out. This airbrush, like the Mr. Hobby, is perfectly clean. Imagine that. So, uh, let me clean this up and then we'll come right back. Alright, let's wrap this up, guys. Um, these are both spotless. It is 2157, Friday, September 1st. Uh, started at 9. Now, it did not take an hour to clean the airbrushes. Uh, it just took uh, that long to film it. Uh, get everything. Well, get everything out. Film it. Um, stop to take pictures. Uh, upload them to Facebook. Uh, talk to a few people. Um, so it didn't take an hour to clean both of these airbrushes. Uh, in fact, you just saw how long it took. Didn't take long at all. Um, again, uh, people say ultrasonic cleaners are good for airbrushes for a few reasons. Uh, it's easier and it's faster. It's not. It is not easier, it is not faster. We just showed that. Or I just showed that, you just watched that. Uh, and the amount of time it would have taken to completely disassemble this airbrush, put it into an ultrasonic cleaner, then take it out of an ultrasonic cleaner, dry it off and put it back together, that, not including the time that the ultrasonic had to run, but just disassembly and reassembly, uh, we are able to clean this airbrush faster than that. But remember, that was the Tamiya. Now the Omni 4000 had the Vallejo Model A, and that's a little bit harder to clean. Not much. Uh, and it took a little bit longer to clean, uh, but still, it's easy. All we did was use a paintbrush, a pipe, a paintbrush, pipe cleaner, uh, interdental brush, and a paper point, and a paper towel, and lacquer thinner. I mean, those are basic supplies that anyone who airbrushes should have anyway. Uh, the only thing that you may not have are the uh, paper points, but those aren't necessary either. Uh, you can use other things to get inside of your nozzle. So, I mean, the ease isn't there because uh, you have to disassemble everything to put in an ultrasonic. And the danger uh, that you run or the risk that you run in using an ultrasonic cleaner and having these things vibrate together and cause uh, undue and unnatural wear, especially onto threads, you really have to take everything apart. And that is something that a lot of guys just don't want to do. Now, I know there are a lot of guys who, when they even do a color change, they completely strip everything out of the airbrush, including everything out of the back, and that's just unnecessary. I know a lot of people think that they need to do that. It's not necessary. You may have to do that uh, if your seals are bad, or if you spill a lot of paint back here because you're clumsy, then maybe. Uh, but it's not... Oh, I'm just like, why is this needle not working? It's because the trigger stopped. So there you have it. Needle still moves. Needle still moves. So you don't need to take everything apart. Maybe once a month, it's a good idea to take everything out and just inspect and check. Yeah, sure. But for a normal cleaning, you don't have to do that. For normal cleaning, putting uh, one of these in an ultrasonic is just a higher risk than doing it by hand. Uh, I have seen too many bad things happen with ultrasonic cleaners. Uh, with airbrushes, with jewelry, I used to do jewelry work, 
Uh, in fact, most jewelers will no longer use an ultrasonic cleaner because one, they can loosen uh, stone settings and rings, necklaces, earrings, things like that, and they can actually crack some stones. Uh, if you have a stone that has a natural stone that has a uh, a fracture in it, it may even be what is called a healed fracture, where the stones actually uh, sort of split and then healed back together. Uh, well, it's still really a, f uh, a fracture there, and the vibrations again of the ultrasonic can actually crack that stone. Just think about an earthquake. That's what an, an earthquake's doing. Uh, so jewelers don't even use them. Most jewelers don't use them anymore. Um, I've seen ultrasonic cleaners completely strip the, uh, the finish off the rear uh, handle of uh, Hard Earned Steam Mech Infinities. Right? I've seen them take the plate, depending on the cleaner people use, completely eat the plating uh, off of cheaper airbrushes. Uh, not that this is a cheaper airbrush. I mean, this is inexpensive. It is not a cheap airbrush. Same thing, same thing with the Omni 4000. While it is a cheap airbrush on sale, you can pick one of these up for about 80 bucks. It's not a cheap airbrush. And expensive, yeah, very, very good. If you don't have one, pick one up. Um, but you don't need an ultrasonic to clean. It's not easier. It's not faster. It's more dangerous. You're having a much higher risk of damaging a part. It's not needed. Now, the only thing, other thing we didn't do in the video that I said we were going to do is clean this off. Uh, we're still going to do that. We're going to do it right now. Uh, do it in a way that... Uh, you might have guessed or you might not have. Either way, it probably uh, will make someone mad. But uh, what's the point of making a YouTube video if you can't uh, piss some people off? And I already, ha I already have with this. I posted this on some Facebook groups and people took offense uh, that I told them their uh, $20 or $30 investment in an ultrasonic cleaner was pointless. Uh, but I knew that was going to happen when I posted it. So easiest way to clean a tile, one of the reasons I like to use tiles, uh, as little pallets. Take a razor blade and just go after it. Now yes, this is a joke. Yes, I do use this as a pallet. Yes, this is how I clean it. Uh, but this is in response to, again, the same video on YouTube about ultrasonic cleaners where the guy used, as an example, a little glass dish and a piece of plastic. Like that means anything with an airbrush. So, not that you should use a razor blade to clean your airbrush, uh, but this is just sort of... Uh, I don't want to use the term poking fun, uh, but it's sort of showing the ridiculousness of uh, saying something's good for an airbrush and then not using an airbrush. Um, there you have it. Uh, again, uh, let me get my cleaning pad and I'll do it uh, for an example. Cleaning pad, paper towel, paper towel. Now this stuff's been on there for days and days. UMP. Let's sit for a second. Even if I use my finger, you can see I'm starting to move some of that paint. And how long has it been there? A second? This is some thick, thick paint. Paper towel. And now we rub. Again. That was the UMP. Use the homebrew stuff. New paper towel. You can see by some of those larger bits it's taking off and eating into that paint. Again, I'm not really letting this sit. Next, we'll use a little bit of lacquer thinner. What would a lacquer thinner do? I wonder. Oh, wait, we just saw what happens. Ooh, let's see. Oh, wow, it does the same thing. Imagine that. Cleaners clean things. 
I gotta write that down. A cleaner cleans things. Man. You know, I need to be careful and not let my trade secrets out. Let people know that cleaners clean things. Because, man, if people figure that out, whew, man, I don't know what the world will come to an end if people figure out cleaners clean things. Let me tell you. So, uh, can you tell that was sarcastic? I hope so. That too. So, again, ultrasonics aren't necessary for cleaning an airbrush. Uh, they're not really necessary for cleaning most anything that we use in our hobby. That's an, uh, 20, 30 bucks that you can spend on something else. 30 bucks, that's half the cost of a Badger Patriot. 30 bucks, that's most airfix kits, a little bit more than an airfix kit. <coughs> that's half a good armor kit. I mean, you can get some good kits for 30 bucks, yet people are going and spending $30 on an ultrasonic cleaner. It's not necessary. There are easy, simple ways to clean your airbrush that are just as fast, if not faster, than an ultrasonic cleaner. Excuse my hands, they're filthy from what I just did. But you don't need an ultrasonic cleaner. They're not easier. They're not faster. And I'll guarantee you if you had an Omni 4000 with as much paint in it as we did and you threw it in an ultrasonic cleaner, you'd probably have to run it two or three, four times to get everything out. Don't waste your money on ultrasonic cleaners, guys. You don't need them. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me in this uh, little experiment. Uh, hopefully... Uh, I just saved you from making uh, a purchase of a piece of equipment you don't need or maybe you do have one and you're thinking about uh, using it for your airbrushes. Uh, hopefully I've stopped you from doing that. But in the end of the day, we're at the end of the day. They're your airbrushes. It's your money. Do what you want. But don't tell me it's easier and faster because it's not.